morning and welcome to the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, UCC. I'm Doug Kimmel, one of the deacons on duty this morning, and I'm here to make the announcements and uh, begin the service. In person worshipers, masking is optional in accordance with the main CDC guidelines for counties experiencing medium rates of COVID 19. For those online, we ask you to please remain muted during responsive units and prayers. Those online are invited to remain after the service for Zoom fellowship time. We'll have coffee and tea in the fellowship hall after the service. Remember today to celebrate our annual church picnic from 4 to 6 p.m. at Tidal Falls in Hancock. Bring a chair and food to share. On Saturday, August 6th, our main conference will be formally voted to call Reverend Dr. Marcia Viola as the Federal Conference Minister. Marcia will begin in late October. Next Sunday, August 21st, we will be at the Hancock Point Chapel. Services there starts at 10 a.m. So if you come here, there'll be nobody here at 9 o'clock. We'll all be on our way down to Hancock Point Chapel for the 10 o'clock service. Please join us there. There will be no Wi-Fi at the chapel, so the service will be recorded and then later posted to YouTube and Facebook. Women's Weekend at Pilgrim Lodge is September 16th and 18th, Friday through Sunday. Let's go. Join Pastor TJ, invite family or friends age 19 and over to join us. Tiered pricing ranges from 137 $277 and scholarships are available. Again, that's a women's weekend at Pilgrim Lodge, September 16th through the 18th. The main conference UCC weekend, weekend at Pilgrim Lodge is Friday through Sunday, September 23rd through 25th. This time the men are invited too, so let's go and relax and enjoy the weekend. If you've not been there, it's on a lovely lake and it's a beautiful spot with uh, good, modern, convenient facilities. Are there any announcements from the congregation? We'll get a microphone here in just a minute. I have a poster that I'll be putting out in the back. It's about the um, work at the cemetery, and it's on the 27th of August. And people who would like to be part of that, Bob will be showing people how to properly clean um, stones and if you'd like to be part of it you have to kind of sign up because there are only about 15 people that have. Any other announcements? That was about uh, work day over at the Hancock uh, Cemetery, Riverside Cemetery, on the 27th of September. August, 27th of August, sorry. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> well, I don't see any of the outreach people. Outreach will be on the 18th, that's Thursday, at 3 o'clock. Any other announcements? Some birthdays and anniversaries coming up in the next week or so. The 14th is Amelia Ashmore. The 15th is an anniversary for David Wild and Cynthia Wood. The 19th is my anniversary, Ron and I. And the 23rd, Jerry Beal. 24th, Cynthia Wood. 25th, Austin Crowley Dunn. And the 29th, Nick and Mary Angela Davis are having an anniversary. Are there any others that you know of that we didn't announce? Well, let us center ourselves and prepare our hearts and minds to worship.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Reverend TJ Mack. We are the Union Congregational Church of Hancock. We are an open and affirming church in the United Church of Christ denomination. No matter who you are, no matter who you love, no matter if you are a friend or a member, no matter where you live, you are welcome here with us, whether it is in the pews, whether it is online, whether it's joining us in the community for projects. Thank you for joining us this morning, and we hope to see you again. Please stand in body or spirit and join in singing our introit in our bulletin, Weave. <laughs> Thank you. 
please join me in the unison invocation printed in the bulletin. God of wisdom, we eagerly seek your presence in our lives and in the world. By your Spirit, speak your word to us and give us your grace to recognize the abundant signs of your care for us, so that we might be free to act in the world with courage and abandon. Amen. children of all ages. <laughs> this morning I want to talk about belonging. And we all belong somewhere. Sometimes we belong everywhere, but in some places more than others. So I, I brought a few examples of outward expressions of where we belong. So my Pilgrim Lodge hat, I really felt connected there. I feel I belong. And part of why I'm connected there is, of course, it's a beautiful, natural setting. Pilgrim Lodge is nature. That's why I go there. I don't go there for the cabin or for the running water or for the food. I go there to be close to nature and close to God. And this was my Pilgrim Lodge name tag when I was a camp counselor identified me, my pronouns, she, her, and hers, and what cabin I was in. So if I were a camper and I was a little bit lost, somebody could help me find my way back. And last weekend we saw a lot of these blue shirts. And some people wearing these blue shirts were members of the church, and some people wearing these blue shirts were friends of the church. Well, they all belong, and we were grateful for everyone's presence. And this shirt I got a couple months ago in June. This is the Ellsworth Pride shirt, and again, the people that wear this shirt, they may actually be part of the LGBTQ community, or they might be allies or friends of the LGBT community. But it's, a, it's an outward way of showing support and belonging. So, but wherever we join, whatever we belong to, it's not typically about the t-shirts or the hats. Again, it's, it starts internally. So it's who we belong to. We belong to our families at birth. We belong to clubs and schools and maybe eventually churches. But ultimately, when we're born, we come from God and belong to God. And when we die, we go back to God. That is our ultimate belonging. And that's where I hope each one of you at every age knows that in your heart and can talk about that freely with your family, your friends, your community. Well, that was a lot of wondering. These monologues are hard. Does anybody have anything they want to add about belonging? What belonging means to you? If I see a hand go up, we'll get a microphone. Otherwise, thank you for listening to my wondering and my, my children's message. Thank you, God for all of us and all the ways that you create connections and belongings with us and for us. May we always feel loved. Amen. Amen. So, not coincidentally, this morning, we are recognizing long-term members of our church. Um, we recognize people on five-year anniversaries. 
So if you're a member and you're thinking, well, what about me? <laughs> It'll be soon. Vicki is coming up to help me with this presentation. And it is a joy to be honoring those in our presence and those who aren't here but are still in our hearts and we are still in their hearts. Those we are honoring this morning for 20 year membership. If you are here, please stand so that we can recognize you. 20 years, Frank Dorsey, Mary Beth Dorsey, Jane Preble. Stand, Jane. <laughs> 25 years, Liz Bunker. Joey Esplin, Ashley Johnson, Rachel Humphrey, Megan Scott, Andrew Severance, and Zach Spaulding. For 30 year members, Mary Alice Freeman, Ann Atkinson, Ted Atkinson, Richard Butters, Ruth Butters, Michael Hodgson, Christy Johnston, Clancy King, Harry Lambda III, Rohana Madigan, Bonnie Ross, and Aaron Shaw. 35 years, Sue Bonner, Everett Esplin, and Will Stevenson. 40 years, Tony Burkhardt, and Betty Lewis. And 45 years, Steve Coffin. And if you would join me in the recognition of long-term members. Oh God, what an abundance of gifts these people have to offer. Music of talents, the melody of laughter, the use of their hands in cooking and repairs, the use of their minds in problem solving, curiosity, compassion, patience, urgency, spiritual reservoirs, financial resources, obedience, and conversion back. All of these gifts and others which bear their personal arms are symbolized in their offerings for the work of the church. Continuing on, O oh God, give yeah. her all good who continually pours your benefits upon us. Of your faithfulness, there is no end, and your care is unfailing. We praise you that the mystery of our life is a mystery of infinite goodness. We praise you for the order and constancy of nature, for the beauty and bounty of the earth, for day and night, summer and winter, seed time and harvest, for the varied gifts of loveliness and new use which every season brings us. We remain one with Christ, committed to the life and work of the church. Congregation, oh God, oh God, we are made glad, glad by the good news of your love of the things, your humble servants. We thank you for creating them and giving them all that is necessary for the life of Christ. All of us to remember your gifts and receive with your heart, mind, hands and feet of these faithful, so that we may continually learn the world and embrace you with the lives of joy and service. Through Jesus Christ, amen.
The Old Testament reading this morning comes from Psalm 80, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 19. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou leadest Joseph like a flock. Thou who art enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up thy might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let thy face shine, that we may be saved. And verses 8 through 19 continues. Thou didst bring a vine out of Egypt. Thou didst drive out the nations and plant it. Thou didst clear the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the river, to the sea, and its shoots to the river. Why then hast thou broken down its walls, so that all who pass along the way, the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock which thy right hand planted. They have burned it with fire, they have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. But let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, the son of man whom thou hast made strong for thyself. Then we will never turn back from thee. Give us life, and we will call on thy name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let thy face shine that we may be saved. And then in the New Testament from Luke chapter 12, verses 49 to 56. And just as a bit of context, because I found this difficult to figure out what the context was, Jesus is continuing his teachings here to his disciples and his followers. I came to cast fire upon the earth and wood that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how I am constrained until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For henceforth in one house there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against her mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the multitudes, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, a shower is coming, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time?
please pray with me. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be like all the perfect and pleasing to you. passages this week speak of the pain of separation. The Hebrew people are feeling cut off from God, expressing their despair at the turn of events in their lives. One can easily imagine the psalmist lamenting the terrible state of the world, lamenting devastation and destruction from wars, lamenting persecution at the hands of oppressive governments, lamenting whole nations suffering from hunger or exposure due to unequal distribution of resources. Why have they fallen out of favor with God, they wonder. They blame God for whatever desperate situations they find themselves in. They cry out to God, insisting that God turn back toward them, insisting that God again smile upon them, promising their abiding and steadfast faith in return. In Luke's Gospel, painful though it is, Jesus is speaking of the need for separation. He warns that parents and siblings will be divided, that families will be torn asunder. Why? Jesus saw the world for what it was, rife with an unjust power structure that placed net worth over human worth. Societal and familiar structures were ingrained and were not going to be easy to change. In order to flip the paradigm, there would need to be social upheaval, and it would cut families to the core. Jesus teaches us that true peace does not come easily. True peace comes after the hard work of naming wrongs, admitting faults and failures, vowing to cease causing harm, making amends, finding a path forward that honors the innate worth and dignity of all. What did Luke mean by saying that Jesus was going to cast fire upon the earth? Why would he call his listeners hypocrites, accusing them of not knowing how to interpret the present time? I'm going to ask you to sit with some uncomfortable truths about from our recent past and from our present reality. Perhaps you have wrestled or are still wrestling with the injustice present in our world, in our country, our state, and even in our counties and towns. Think back a couple of years to the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. His death was cruel, unjust, racially motivated, and worst of all, not unprecedented. His death at the hands, or more accurately, at the knee of a Minneapolis police officer sparked worldwide rage and worldwide protests. In the United States, the flames of injustice were already kindled but the outrage of his murder set the world on fire. Activists leading the charge for change could have easily been citing this scripture. There will be division. There needs to be division. Parent against child, mothers-in-law against daughters-in-law, and I would add, sibling against sibling. All familial relationships were at risk when it came to talking about long-buried racist attitudes and norms. If family members were not on the side of justice, did we remain silent and opt to keep the family peace? What about us? Were we, or are we, on the side of justice? Or are we more interested in keeping the peace that we know in our little corner of the world. Jesus called his listeners hypocrites and asked, why do you not know how to interpret the present time? We 
and see what we want to see. The racial inequalities in our country and in our world need to be upended and equalized. We can turn a blind eye, or we can see. Until we break down and rebuild our flawed and unjust social systems, we will not know the promise that Jesus makes of heaven on earth. We see, but do not desire, the work of meaningful change that would assure this promise for all, not just for some. Jesus was aggrieved that he was teaching and healing and preaching and yet people were continuing to ignore his message, continuing to fail to interpret the signs of the present time. Jesus was coming to baptize with fire, coming to cause disruption in order to bring about a new day of healing and restoration. His mission was to disturb the unjust systems of the status quo. Perhaps you, like me, wrestled to the point of exhaustion, and then quit wrestling before any lasting change was made. Justice awaits us. Justice awaits those who are marginalized. I urge us to continue paying attention to the present times. Not only have we not fully acknowledged or repaired the racial injustices that, that flared up and exploded in our country two years ago, but we are continuing to see injustices to women, to LGBTQ communities, and to religious minorities. The proliferation of these injustices continues to create deeper and deeper divides between us, evidenced in our partisan politics, our inflammatory rhetoric, and our increasingly worsening gun violence. Our Hebrew ancestors blame God for their dire straits. Do we also seek to blame God for the wars, the famines, the injustices, the divisiveness all around us? Or rather than blame God, can we turn toward God and seek reconciliation? Rather than placing net worth over human worth, can we put the power of love ahead of the love of power? We must not let divisiveness be the end of this story. From our divisions, we must cultivate compassion and understanding for the other. From our divisions, we must seek meaningful and lasting reparations. From our divisions, we must imagine what heaven on earth looks like for all, not just for some and then begin living into it, living, begin living into that reality. We are broken, but we are not hopeless. Ultimately, the two scriptures we heard this morning speak to the work of restoration, and we are part of that restoration. We do know how to interpret the present time. We do know how to name past and present harms and how to heal divisions. We do know what heaven on earth should and can look like. We do, we will, we must. We must begin again, and we must begin now with all of our hearts and all of our souls and all of our minds together. Amen. 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 Please, Stand in body or spirit and join in singing God who stretched the spangled heavens in our red hymnal number 67.
to set aside time each week to bring prayers to the congregation, of course, to God, to bring them aloud as well as to hold them in our hearts. I'll start with joy this week in the Harp Institute that brought so much music to Hancock. I was at the Friday evening concert, and I know some people were there Sunday night and Monday um, at the concerts. Such beautiful music. Are there other joys or concerns that people wish to speak out loud in the pews or online? Sally. Yes, I just asked prayers. I think it's both joy and concern. My grandson Parker is going to college tomorrow, I think it is, at uh, Rochester Institute of Technology in New York State. Parker, as some of you know, is a trans child, now going into an adult. And so this is a particularly special um, journey in very good spirits and looking forward to it. And I just hope that that can continue. Thank you. Prayers for Parker as he heads off to college. Carol. I really was thinking about this just after the children's talk. I, um, it's about belonging. And um, I wanted to belong to this congregation because I have admired this church and respected this church and what it's been doing for almost 40 years of coming up here. But what I wasn't really prepared for was how much my sense of belonging here has been increased by the very, very warm welcome that I have been given here. I have felt so good uh, when I walk in and people have greeted me and recognized me. And although I'm terrible at naming names, people have greeted me with Carol. And it has just felt very good. So I'm just thankful for this. Thank you for expressing that, Carol. So beautiful. Peggy. I will echo Sally's prayer. I actually have three great nieces and a great nephew entering colleges. Uh, it's an extraordinary convolution. And then my own granddaughter uh, is a year older, is transferred to College of the Atlantic. But one, one great niece is starting at Penn State. One great niece is coming east from Oregon to University of New England in Bitterford. Um, a, a, um, the third grade niece is going all the way from Seattle. She's never left home until this summer to Rice University in Houston, Texas. And my great nephew, who has grown up largely in Sweden, though earlier in New Jersey, is going to a university in Denmark. And, and so it's quite a confluence. And this is the season for, for uh, as having spent my entire adult life in that world. Um, but but uh, yes, we, we send prayers with so many young people who are making new starts and, and uh, facing challenges and, and concerns and worries, but also great excitement. Prayers for them all. I'm actually delighted that Betty Lewis is here with us this morning. So good to see you. Rob and I have a very special joy because the exchange student who lived with us for the summer of his graduation from Sumner High School has returned for a visit for almost a month, and he's still at home waiting for his luggage to arrive. But I'm sure he'll be here uh, 
Sunday, Sunday before he leaves. I will add a few prayers from the week um, for Pat's sister Susie and her family out west for safety for them, uh, for neighbor Pat Rackley in Lincolnville who is in the hospital. And I would offer prayers for the family and friends of actress Anne Heche. May her death shed light and healing on the devastation of mental illness and substance abuse. Um, such a well-known, vibrant person, and their struggles were well-known as well. May, may we hold her in light, and that all those among us that have passed and that are still alive and struggling We have many people on our hearts each week, and we continue to hold them in constant prayer and lift them up as well. And we offer time, especially now, for your silent prayers and intentions. mercy, through the ages you have led us through trial and hardship, providing all of our needs and speaking to us words of promise. Confident of your faithfulness, we bring to you our prayers for the world and for ourselves and for our loved ones. We pray for the mission of this church, that we may plant and grow faithful people to serve others in love. We pray that all might tend to your justice watch for your coming. We remember before you those who have died and pray that they might rest in your light divine. We pray for all who are sick or suffering that our care for them may reveal your healing. We pray for your creation that we may cultivate its flourishing. And we pray for your guidance as we go about our days every day wanting to do good in your sight. Holy God, hear all of our prayers, spoken and silent, and hear this prayer as we join our voices together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make their face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn their face toward you and give you peace.